1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. The Chaplain's Report today comes from the book of Daniel. We are going to continue our look into the book of Daniel, and we'll just go into the text here in a second. Again, just for those of you that haven't really been keeping up, we've had the lead up to Daniel in the lion's den, the king being duped into making a rule that anybody that would pray to any god other than him would wind up in the lion's den. He's unable to undo one of those law once he signed it. Daniel gets caught praying during that time period. They throw Daniel in the lion's den, even though the king really doesn't want to. And we see the reaction after the night is passed in Daniel 6, 19 through 22. Then the king arose at dawn, at the break of day, and went in haste to the lion's den. When he had come near the den to Daniel, he cried out with a troubled voice. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you constantly serve, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel spoke to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth, and they have not harmed me, insomuch as I found in, as I was found innocent before him. And also toward you, O king, I have committed no crime. Now one of the things that we talked about earlier is a form of religious persecution. It doesn't get more religiously persecuting than that, that for practicing or expressing your faith, even in the privacy of your own home, just because other people happen to be able to see you and catch you, that your life would be forfeit, that you would be able to be killed and eaten by lions after that. That just because you prayed to your God, you could be killed. And yet we see Daniel's reaction, and it's pretty profound. Daniel has faith that God is going to take care of him. And what's more amazing is that Darius, he is so inspired by Daniel's faith that he believes that God is going to take care of him. Now, he's still worried. He was still up the entire night fretting about this, and it's understandable. He's afraid that he might lose a really good friend. But you'll notice how Darius refers to God after this, that even before he has seen the miracle come to its full fruition— that even before he is seen, God actually delivered Daniel for the lion's den, because he doesn't know, for all he knows, that Daniel's lion food at this point. He seems to have a faith in God and exalts him as the Most High, the living God. So it's clear that Daniel's influence in his teaching has had a profound effect on the king. Maybe not a profound enough effect for him to realize that it was a really bad idea to pass this law in the first place a few days ago, but this is a harrowing experience for the king. And the king now has a much different perspective to offer when it comes to having faith that he is going to protect Daniel. And I also want you to notice here that he says, I have committed no crime against God. I have been found innocent in his eyes, and I have committed no crime against you. What does that mean? On the very technical side, Daniel absolutely committed a crime against the king. The king made a law, which it was within his legal authority to do, and Daniel broke that law. Regardless of whether or not you think the law was a good idea, Darius certainly didn't. Regardless of whether or not you think that law was just, Daniel did break the law of the Medes and the Persians and suffered the consequences for it. But yet you'll notice he says, I've committed no crime against you and I've committed no crime against God. Why? Because God's law trumps man's law. That Daniel had in no way injured or harmed King Darius in any way. And so, looking at it from the moral lens, and, and Darius knows this and Daniel knows this, there is nothing that happened between he and Darius where Daniel, praying to his God, inflicted some kind of injury or slight against King Darius. 
Darius was not somebody that was worthy of worship. Darius was not somebody that ought to be prayed to and petitioned to as though he is a god. God is, and that's the difference. And so Daniel kept Darius in his proper place and a respect for his authority as his king. But he had greater respect for the greater authority of his father, the king of heaven. And so even though it was against the laws of the land, even though it was technically illegal according to the laws of the Medes and the Persians, which King Darius had written at that point, it wasn't against God's law. And Daniel recognizes the superiority of that law. He recognizes that it was incorrect. It was an incorrect law, and it actually somewhat reminds me of the concept we see from Martin Luther King's letter from a Birmingham jail. That ultimately, there are some laws that are unjust. There are some laws that are enslave man, but God's laws make man free. That was something that Darius and Daniel experienced firsthand that day. When God sent his angels into the lion's den to be with Daniel and shut up the mouth of a hungry lion that saved Daniel from the threat to his life. Because God was showing, my law is supreme. And it will be adhered to. And that goes for somebody like Daniel. And it even goes for somebody that was, at the time, the king and ruler of most of the known world. God was asserting the superiority of his law as the true king of all creation. Stay the course, friends. Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.